liberty for all. Corporal Pearson, army discharge. What about them government lands, Captain? I'm going looking for some of them. They're up Indiana Way, in the Flat Creek District. Thanks. Next, Private Ralph Hertzup. Yes, sir. Honorable discharge. Are you going to look for some of that land, too? No, sir. Just a job teaching school for me. Years of that, and I can study for law. Well, good luck to you, schoolmaster. Next, Private Henry Friend. Honorable discharge. Oh, go on. Get a good feed now, but we got a long ways to go. And a boy. Hey, Ralph. Now that the war's over, you know what you're gonna do, Ralph? No. Sure you don't want some of them flat quick lands? Well, I don't know anything about farming. I was never out of the city until I joined the army. If I could get a job teaching for a couple of years, I could study up on Blackstone. Yeah. Where are you going to get the job? I don't know. Hey, how about putting in with us? I'm sure the colonel here won't mind your company. <laughs> well, if it's all right with the colonel, it's all right with me. How about it, colonel? Quick is Reb. Lotta. Used to live there. Heading that way? Reckon. Mind if we trail along with you. Oh! The world will little note or long remember what we say here. But it can never forget what they did. Cracky Ralph, you've got education. It's great to hear you say them big words. I wish you'd say that lesson again. The colonel here always perks up when he hears that Gettysburg speech. <laughs> Do I have to listen to that darn fool thing again? Don't you worry, General Grant. He'll run out of breath mighty soon. Come on, keep kind of soothes General Grant's left ear. Lincoln always meant everything he said. Too bad he didn't live to carry it through. We'll be all right when we get them lambs. Yes, if you ever get them. Oh, shut up, Reb. We won this war, didn't we, Ralph? I never could find out who won any war, except those that had sense enough to stay home. burning over yonder. Well, come on, let's go help them. Hello, Dutch. How did it happen? Night riders. What for? I was warned about letting soldiers sleep in my farm. They don't want no strangers coming to Flat Creek. What does he mean by night riders? Well, let's take the law in the old hand. It's kind of tough country, eh? We're a getting near Flat Creek. Yonder's Jake Means' place now. Dr. Small's gun. 
We're still rats. There ain't no more German Yankees gonna kiss you. Chucky, I've got something better than a shotgun. Get away, you'll catch smallpox. You just wasting your time. You ain't gonna get nothing from Jake. I'll catch up with you. Bet you the rebel. You don't mind for house and water, do you? Go ahead if you want to. It's your funeral. Small pot. Just get out of here. never got me anywhere. Oh. Don't say I didn't warn you. It'll just be a secret between us. Forever. It's catching all over. I'll risk one foot anyway. Oh. Why don't you haul in your flag, Rebel? War's over. Aren't you afraid of catching something? I've had everything out of this war. Except a nice cut of pie. We're out of everything and also pie. Well, heat up some water and we'll boil these boots. You know, I ate my best pair back in Chattanooga, but these are fairly tender in the uppers. Come here. Yep, these uppers will stew up in about seven hours, but the heels... I wouldn't give you that for boot heels. Not unless, of course, you soak them overnight with a pinch of soda. Maybe the heels got tough from too much running away. Hold on there! Shockley, I know what you're aiming to do. I'm your prisoner, soldier. Go away, Shockley. He can't kiss you. Not if I know it. Who, me? Kiss her? Say, soldier, there are some things a man simply has to draw the line. Soldier, I resent that. Well, whatever put such an idea in your head? Well, I don't see any sense in kissing. It's a waste of time. It ought to be abolished. Don't you agree with me, Shucky? Sure, soldier? Well, maybe. After dinner. Mister. But I never could see nothing in this kiss. All my life, I never could myself. There's nothing in it, Miss. Besides, it wouldn't do you no good. She'd just slap your face like she'd done the others. Don't say she done. Say she did. You know, past tense of the verb to do. Now, let's take up the verb to slap. Will the second form girl kindly rise and explain the same to the teacher? Hey, you ain't the new schoolmaster, are you? Don't say ain't, Chalky. He means that Sat Creek District is looking for a new schoolmaster. Oh, are they? Say, that's the best news I've heard since I started on this walking tour. Oh, you needn't be in such a hurry. Well, maybe somebody will get there ahead of me won't make any difference if they do. School teachers don't last very long around here. Well, at least I can try. Whom do I see? Jake Means. You'll find him at the general store. Thanks, Miss... Uh, I didn't catch your name. I... I'm Jake Means, Hannah. Thanks. 
Hannah. Wish me luck, soldier. John Rodenhafer, still owe you, Doc? Yeah. I can't get it out of him. Well, after he pays me, I'll tell you, and maybe you can collect. Uh, more soldiers. This bunch sounds troublesome. Maybe we better get the night riders on them. Well, now, maybe Doc's got some of that soft soap left over from that last bunch that he talked to. Hey, Doc. A few well-chosen words might not be amiss. <coughs> We're always proud to welcome our country's heroes. <laughs> Fellow citizens of the glorious Grand Army. Hear what he's got to say. Men, <clears throat> I appreciate your feelings. There's no one more than I who deplores seeing his country's heroes going around begging from town to town. But you will have to move on to some other place. There are no government lands for you here. Why, we were told to come to open land for us here at Flat I'm sorry. You have been misinformed. You have been misled into marching over this land like a plague of locusts. The towns are aroused against you. What? What are we supposed to do? Some of these boys have walked hundreds of miles. You may camp on the river bottom for a few days. After that, you'll have to move on. Move on, sir. Well, sir, I see Doc ain't forgotten none of his soft soap, huh? Say, you've been away quite a while. I wouldn't go around doing too much talking if I was you. Oh, Doc, don't worry me none. <laughs> Hi, Corporal. How'd you make out? Not so good. They're trying to tell us there ain't no land. But we're going to camp on that quick button where we find out. Why don't you notify the government? Say, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Come along, camp with us. I can't just now. I hear they're looking for a new schoolmaster. See you later. All right. Hey, take the colonel down there, will you? All right. So you'd like to try the job of a schoolmaster, eh? I'd like a chance, Mr. Means. You don't know what you're up against in this district, young man. <coughs> <clears throat> My cough medicine. Bad season for cold. You know, the boys drive off the last two schoolmasters, and they lick the one before them like blazes. Maybe the teachers didn't use the right methods. Well, now you might teach summer school where nothing but children come. I figure it takes the right smart man to be schoolmaster in Flat Creek in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> they pitch out of doors, Sonny, neck and heels, afore Christmas. <clears throat> I think we should give the young man a chance. I'm sure I'll be able to handle the curriculum. Eh? Curriculum. You know, course of study. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Oh, that's a whopper. Can you spell it? Mm, you know, you know, we set great store in spelling here in Flat Creek. Oh, oh, mm, curriculum. Here it is. Uh, one or two R's. C U R C U R R I C R I C U U C U R I C U L U M L U M. Curriculum. Mm. Correct. Now, about the meaning of the oh, word. It makes no difference about meaning. Words are made to be spelled. We have some great spelling bees here. Some of the best in Indiana. Well, I'm sure I'd like to position. Well, let him try it. If he knows what he's up against. Yeah. Come on, young man. 
What do you look like, Hank? Well, it's kind of peaked looking to me for a schoolmaster, bud. <laughs> Is that him? Shucks, he's still wet behind the ears. Are they the scholars? You'll find some of your pupils rather full grown. Yeah, uh, take Bud Larkin there, for instance. Who's gonna take me? We were just saying, take you for example, Bud. Think you can learn me anything? That depends on you. You're darn right it depends on me. I'm sure we'll get along all right, Larkin. Don't worry. Who, me? I ain't worrying none. Pick Mr. Hartzook a nice coat and pants and shoes and hat. And uh, medium small in size. But I don't think I can afford them. If you don't stick on the job, we'll take them back. Give me the school key and that bunch of birch rods. There's nothing like licking to go with learning. Girls ain't so bad. Boys need a lot of walloping to make them learn. Licking and learning, learning and licking. They both go together. You'll board the first fortnight with me, the second with Squire Hawkins here. Yeah, if he lasts that long. Oh, Pa. Hello, Pa. Just heard you got a new schoolmaster. That's it. This is my daughter, Martha. She'll show you the way home. With pleasure, Miss May. Proud and happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. Hartsmith. <laughs> Hartsmith. <sir. laughs> Ralph Hartsmith. <laughs> well, super sick, it don't make no difference. <laughs> so long as you put your heart in your work. I'm sure he'll put his heart in his work. <laughs> Looks kind of young to be teaching girls. <coughs> I hope he's not overly fond of female society. We know how to take care of that kind. Teach me. <laughs> That's our place. Yes, I know. Hannah! Hannah! I got that job. Your sister's a funny girl. Hannah? Yes. She's not my sister. That's our bound girl. Bound girl? Yes. She's bound out to us, and her brother's bound out to Dr. Small to Lara Vase. Oh, I see. Did she say she was my sister? No. No, it's my mistake. She said she was Jake Means, Hannah. To meet you. Pleasure's all mine, Mrs. May. I'll help you get the spare room ready. Like some fruit? Now that's something we gotta get settled right now. What? I saw you this afternoon. You mean with Hannah? Bound girls ain't to be spoke to, 
or carried on with, especially for schoolmasters. that trap door, Hank. All right, you kids, come on. Get back to your seats. All right, children, forget your ABCs and let's sing Pop Goes the Weasel. Morning, Sharky. Why aren't you ready for school? I can't go. Oh, Doc Small needed you to hold potatoes, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, there won't be any school. We got the whole place nailed up again. And Bud's got a loose blank. So you'll fall through into the cellar. Well, that shows they're interested anyway. run after him. If he gets through today, let him run after you. Where do you think you're going? I finished the breakfast dishes. I asked you. Where do you think you're going? To school. Common school wasn't good enough for you once. That's changed your mind. A new schoolmaster? That's not so. What did Bud Larkin say if he found you taking sides against him? Get that dress off and start cleaning up around here. have a spelling bee. I'm Squire Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> the object of this spelling bee, <coughs> as is customary, is to see who can spell the new schoolmaster down. Hey, Bud, where's your cough medicine? Shut up. <laughs> going to pick the first word. You know. Hey, look, fellas. There's something wrong with that stove. Come on, 
Take our places inside. <laughs> it seems we were preparing for a spelling bee a little earlier. Suppose we continue with you, Mr. Lark. Would you kindly step up here, Mr. Lark? What word were you trying to spell? Inseparable. Inseparable. Can you spell it? Can I? I N N. S E C sec insect. Hold on there, that's wrong. Huh? Why you can see for yourself. Right here in the book. How is that dirty trick, bud? Come on. Yeah, where is it? Why, Bud, you're ringing wet. You'd better take your coat off. You better take off your own coat. What for? You know what for. Well, all right, but it's got to be a private fight. Alone. Man to man. I know a good place. Come on. You kids stay here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Maybe five. What are you doing? I'm clearing a ring. Them sticks might put your eyes out. You're going to a lot of trouble on my account. No trouble at all. Those are wonderful arms, bud. What do you do for a living? I'm a rail splitter. Greatest man this country ever knew was a rail splitter. Don't give me no soft soap. Don't try to talk me out of it. Go ahead. Knock it off. I dare you to. You know, you kind of remind me of him, too. Who? That other young rail splitter. He was a great big hulk of a man like you, until he began to use his brains. But he wanted an education, and he fought to get it. And one day, he walked with kings. You're going to fight me? I have been fighting. But I've lost, so one more won't make any difference. When it's over, I can't go back, so I want you to leave these at the store for me. I don't want them damaged. They're not paid for. The, uh, the pants will have to report as lost in action. Real fighters always shake hands before the first round. No hard feelings, bud. Just because you can't see things my way. Abe hey, would know those things couldn't last if the people were educated. And he'd soon put a stop to their keeping slaves, bound girls and boys. Like Hannah Thompson? <laughs> yes, Hannah and Shockey and the others, and yourself, too. Because ignorance is slavery, 
and freedom and education go together. They're inseparable. Inseparable. That's the word you tried to spell. Well, come on. Let's get it over with. It's all over. You win. No, bud. You win. You think a fellow like me would ever amount to anything? A man can be anything he wants. Could I be a surveyor? If you study. Would you learn me? Of course, bud. You see, there's a reason. If I could get to be a surveyor, there's a girl. Her and me could get married. Sure you could. You go back to school. I'll be along in a minute. Gee, Willikers, look at that. Schoolmaster must have been Bud. <laughs> All right, children. You may now all go back to your places. Oh, Mr. Hartsook, you won. Here comes Bud now. Wow, that black guy. Black guy. You and me, Bud, we can take him together. From now on, he'll do the learning and I'll do the licking. And I'll lick anybody in this school that won't learn. enough to say so anyway. He's a smart one. That fellow will amount to something. Well, a week ain't enough time to judge him on. Well, if anybody told me a week ago that Bud Larkin would be eaten out of his hand, why, I thought that was crazy. No telling how far the schoolmaster will get after he becomes a lawyer. Why, he might even get in the legislature. Then I'd invite you to the mansion once or twice. Maybe. <laughs> Lord, oh, I hear that. Us in the mansion. <laughs> well, you ain't catched him yet. Get along there. Me too? You too, if you know what's good for you. They'll see you. No harm meeting by accident. Accident? Don't you know? Bound girls ain't to be spoke to or carried on with. Well, I wouldn't think of carrying on with it. I'm glad to hear it. Well, goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to ask your advice about my career. You seem to be getting along very well. What's the next thing I ought to do, Hannah? You know, you got me into this right up to my sleeves. All you need now is some of this. Hey, look out. That's rich land. You should get some of it. Gee, that's lovely stuff, isn't it? What would a fellow have to do to get an acre of this? You might get a lot of acres and a very nice girl thrown in. Martha? Say, do you think I could get a hundred acres and Martha? That's a lot of mud, but a smart Yankee might even get two hundred. Thanks, Hannah. I'll never forget you for this suggestion. You'd have to spruce up a bit, fix your cravat, stay home nice and not run around with bound girls. Who, me? I'd never look at a bound girl again. Martha's so sweet. I hate to see you take her away. Oh, you could go right on working for us, Martha and me. Oh, thanks. Then when your bound time was up, I'd pick out a nice middle-aged farmer to marry you, and you could keep on working for him and not even notice the change. You mustn't keep thinking always of me. Try to think of Martha. Oh, well, that's no effort. I think she's very sweet and very pretty. Do you? I uh, I don't want to wait a minute to go see about those acres. Thanks, Hannah. Wait a minute. Take the first of them with you now. Hey, what, 
Why, you... education to put this thing straight up to the government. That's oh, I can't seem to get it. Don't worry about it, bud. Takes three years to learn to be a surveyor. Come on, walk over to the house with me. We'll talk about it on the way over. That's fine, bud. Guess I'll have to show it to my girl. Great. When's the wedding? I'll be the best man. Would you? Well, you're my best friend, aren't you? Who is she? Oh, I ain't told you much about her. I ain't even told her what I'm trying to do. I want to surprise her. She lives in there. Well, that really is a surprise. Yeah, she's a wonderful girl, bud. You like her? Like her? Or bud, I envy you. She's the prettiest girl in Flatfield. Say, I guess you mean Martha, don't you? Well, yes, of course. I'm glad you like Martha. I thought for a minute it might be Hannah. Hannah? Yes. There she is now. What a show I'm doing. Hiya, Hannah. Okay. Look what I've been doing. Ralph's helping me to be a surveyor. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Martha. Ralph knows all about you and me. He wants to help us get married. He even said he'd be the best man. Did he say that? Sure. Him and me is friends. We're inseparable. We ain't the only one. He was just telling me how pretty Martha is. It's very becoming. Yes. Shall we go in the house? Yes.
I'm telling you, Hannah, he's the smartest man that ever come to Flat Creek. Smart enough to get a hundred acres. All Yankees are smart. Yankee peddlers, Yankee school teachers. They're always looking for the best bargain. You shouldn't talk like that about him. Don't Why, talk he... to me about him. He's just a cheap Yankee peddler. I hate him. I, I hate him. about the squire making him sleep in the barn? I didn't talk to him. Go on, Mom. What about it, Mom? Might not get the chance when he's boarding with the squire. I ain't for him. Better have him on your side. It'll cost you more than 160 acres. Gee, and not another acre. 160. I've got something to say about this. Needn't be so stingy. Seems how you and Doc and the squire got the land. I don't want to swallow me, are you? All right, 160. Better call the schoolmaster again. I want to explain something to you. That won't be necessary. Sorry I'm late. Better eat hardy, Mr. Hartbrook. Won't get such good feeding at the Squires. Or such good quarters, either. Thanks. Great country, this, Mr. Hartshook, for a fellow to take hold and settle down. When Jake and me came here, we started on 80 acres. I guess he owes his prosperity to you, Mrs. Lane. I brung Jake the 80 acres he started on. The man that marries Martha will be luckier. He'll get half a section. 320 acres. <coughs> What's that? I should say the man who married Martha would be very lucky to get her without any land at all. That covers about everything. The only thing that worries me is mentioning their names. Don't you all worry about that. Well, when I left here to go to war, Jake Bean didn't have but 200 acres. Doc Small won't have nothing but a horse doctor. And Squire Hawkins didn't have enough money to even buy cough medicine. Now they got thousands of acres. What'd they get them if they didn't steal government land, huh? All right. Here it goes to Washington.
got you in a trap that time. <laughs> yeah. Well, see if you can get us out of this. Adjutant General Office, Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, what does it say? Read it. Yes, sir. Charges of irregularity in government plans have been filed against yourself. Wire Hawkins. Jacob Mean. My schoolmaster, Ralph Hartsook, on behalf of soldiers. These charges are of common occurrence. We must investigate, and to that end, you will kindly be prepared to make explanations to Major Thorndike, who is in route en route. Your district. Schoolmaster, eh? And you was gonna give him 320 acres to marry your daughter. Yeah. Time to get rid of him. He's too smart. Let's fire him. Well, we can't do that without giving the town for good reason. And we have to be careful of the adjutant general's office now. If he was spelled down at the spelling bee tonight, that would be reason enough. Yeah, but we can't depend on that. We ain't depending on that. Gee, Mr. Hart, sir, I don't see why Squire Hawkins makes you sleep in the barn. Well, schoolmasters have to get used to boarding around, Shaggy. <laughs> I'll get it. Looks like we're going to have a pretty good crowd tonight. Yes, yeah, they're coming in right, Clark. Well, I, I hope it's as big as it was last year. Uh, so do I. That, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> Seven o'clock, Squire. Reckon we better get started. Why, of course. Never can tell, Shaggy. for years, but you can't hold a candle to him. We'll see. I'm so excited. I hope nobody spells the new schoolmaster down. I'd hate to see him have to go. There's a lot of good spellers here tonight. I'm not worrying. Ladies and what came with you, huh? Ladies and what came with you? Oh, he said it louder last year. We will now choose sides. Doc Small takes one team. And the schoolmaster takes the other. Step right up to the front and put your spelling books on the desk. Here's mine. I'll take Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Mrs. Gamble. Yes, <laughs> we pretty near got the sides ready. 
Now, uh, we... Are we in time? Yes. Uh, your next choice, Mr. Schoolmaster. I'll take Bud Lark. Well, I'll take Hannah. Now we will commence with the word commence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you first, Mr. Johnson. C O M C O M M I N C E, Min. Come in. Wrong. Next, Mrs. Gamble. C O M C O M M E N C E, Min. Come in. Correct. The next oh. word is uh, partiality. P A R P A R S H E. Wrong. Next. Oh. <laughs> One word. <laughs> Next. P A R P A R S H I. Wrong. Next. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Partiality. P. P A R. Cube. A Chinaman's cube. C U E Q. Wrong. Next. Q U E U E Q. -E -Q. <laughs> Correct. The next word will be uh, oh, commotion. O M. Come. M O Mo Hamo S H U N. Sean, commotion. Wrong. <laughs> Next. Commotion. C O M Com M U U. Wrong. Pneumonia. Pneumonia. C N E U N M O N M O N N U M O N I A. Yeah, pneumonia. Correct. Diphtheria, Doc. <coughs> DYP dip T A G -E wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. I'm sorry. Wrong. What knocked Doc out? Diphtheria. Huh? Diphtheria. What she know about diphtheria? Horses don't get it. Diphtheria. Diphtheria. D I P H dip. T H E R there, dip there, I A, yeah, dip there. Correct. Indignant. I N N D I G, dig, indig, N A N T net, indignant. Correct. Intangible. I N N T A N tan, intan, G I, J, intangible, B L E, Bob, intangible. Correct. Insufferable. I N N S U F stuff and stuff F E R A stra and stuff stra B L E bull insufferable. Correct. Inseparable. I N N S E S E Insert. T E R. Per. Wrong. Inseparable hammer. I N N S E S E Insert. P A R Par. Insert Par. A R. Insepara. B L E. Bull. Inseparable. Correct. Here's luck for you. Now we can fire him legal right. <laughs> Congratulations. Guess we'll have to be looking around for a new schoolmaster. Oh, 
how he let you win. He can spell inseparable as easy as I can spell cat. What? Why, he spelled it for me a hundred times. He taught me the word. Then why didn't he spell it tonight? Oh, because she's a girl, that's why. Because it's all a scheme between them, bud. No, that isn't so, isn't it? I spell it from the very beginning when you let him think you were my sister. That's a lie. Go on home, Chucky. And you too, Hannah. Now, what's the meaning of this trouble, Martha? Bud can tell you. It was all a stink. She didn't spell him down. There's something going on between them two. You'd better go on and do what Doc told you. That's all right. Why did you do it, Ralph? What? Let me spell you down. I didn't. You won. On inseparable? Why not? It's a very difficult word to spell. It's a more difficult word to live. I thought the best way to spell it was not to. What do you mean? Was it all on account of Bud? Things might have been different, Hannah, if you'd told me about Bud at the beginning. Maybe that's why I didn't tell you. I wish you had. What difference should it make? I don't love Bud. Then it wasn't fair of you to let him think so. Any more than it was fair of you to let me think you loved Martha. That's why I came here tonight to try to spell you down. I hated you. I wanted to humiliate you the way you humiliated me. I'm sorry for what I did, Beth. I'm sorry the way things happened, too, Hannah. But nothing makes any difference now. I'm going. You were going anyway. The spelling bee just gave you an excuse to go and let Bud think that was the reason. Goodbye, Hannah. It's a disgrace to the community. If he wasn't carrying on with her, there'd be no reason to let her win tonight. It ain't so. If you say that again, Doc Small, I'll lay in it. Hold on, on, bud. Hold on. Use some sense. We ain't blaming you for getting mad. Well, it's just too foxy for you. It's her fault, bud, more than it is his. No, I tell you, Hannah didn't even like him. Why, she was mad at him. What for if there wasn't anything between them? A girl don't get mad at a boy for nothing. And that sounds reasonable. That's no way for a schoolmaster to be carrying on with a bound girl anyway. Schoolmaster's supposed to be trusted almost like a preacher. Yes. We'll close the school and bring him up on charges. We'll question her. Make her tell. And if it's true, we'll ride him out on a rail. <laughs> She's been here and taken a thing. She's running away. Keeping her. You ought to be here any minute. 
you again, Ralph. Just let me hide here a minute until they go. Who? Jake Means and the townspeople. They nearly caught me. Sharky and I are running away. Mr. Randall is taking us to Kentucky. Does Bud know? No. But there's no reason for you to go now. I told you I'm leaving. You mustn't go, Ralph. Everybody knows you didn't lose this telling me. Don't you see? You can't give up your chance to become a lawyer and be something in life. I'll be all right. They'll soon stop looking for me, and then I can go. You better take off those white shoes. Let's go see what's cheap in the shoppy. All right, Mr. Randall. person to break a lawful contract and for conduct come fit in the teacher and you'll be lucky if you get as far as the jail come on come on Oh, 
Study together. Three years is a long time to be a surveyor. But you won't let me down. Will you, Ralph? Gentlemen, Jake means. Uh, Dr. Small and Squire Hawkins have been transferred to Indianapolis for centuries. <laughs>